Hello, my name is Maddie and I am a PhD student in chemical engineering at Montana State University. And today's video is going to be about my tips for getting into research as an undergraduate student. And this is something that a lot of uh, undergraduate students are really interested in, but don't really know how to go about. And I was kind of in the same boat myself as an undergraduate. So I kind of want to give you some tips if that is something you are interested in. And so one of my number one tips when looking into undergraduate research is kind of looking into what different research centers your university might have. I know Montana State is home to the Center for Biofilm Engineering and the Thermal Biology Institute, as well as some other research centers. And a lot of times these research centers have secretaries and they can help you out with figuring out what labs might be hiring. So you can look on campus, like on your school website or something like that to see what kind of research centers are available. And then you can either email the secretary or preferably maybe go in person and say, hey, I'm an undergraduate student. I'm really wanting to get into research. Are there any labs that are looking to hire undergraduate students for help? And they might be able to help you out directly or they might be able to suggest someone who knows a little bit better. Um, and that's a really easy way to kind of survey a lot of different labs at once without going to every professor that runs each lab. Um, another way to do a similar thing is to kind of ask your upperclassmen that you might know or even your TAs. Uh, your TAs might be undergraduates, but they also might be grad students. And this is a good thing to do because Upperclassmen that are still undergraduates that are doing research will have a good idea of what kind of labs are hiring undergraduates because they themselves are an undergraduate. And then a graduate TA is an excellent option because they know a lot of stuff that's going on with research. And it's quite possible that your TA themselves is looking for an undergraduate student helper, which would be awesome. If you already have that relationship working with your TA and you're a good student, they're gonna be even more likely to be like, hey, actually, I'm looking for an undergraduate to help me out. Is this something you're interested in? Um, additionally, your TAs will know more of the professors in the department, especially like the higher level um, or more specific professors especially as like a freshman and a sophomore and undergraduate, you're doing a lot of just basic classes like chemistry, physics, math, uh, stuff like that. And if that's not necessarily your field of research, you probably won't be interested in the type of research those professors are doing. But if you have like one TA in your one engineering class or something like that that you're in, your, that TA is probably gonna be a really good resource. And the thing about talking to TAs and upperclassmen is it's usually a little bit less intimidating than talking to professors. Talking to professors can be really intimidating, especially if you don't know them really well. So definitely utilize your TAs. However, your professors are going to be the ones who probably can help you out the most. So definitely talk to your professors if you can. Like I said, especially talk to the professors that are within that field that you find the most interesting. So like for me with bio and chemical engineering, I was talking to like my biomedical um, class professor who taught intro to biomedical engineering or um, just like your more specific professors rather than just your general chemistry or your organic chemistry professors. And you, those professors, whoever you talk to, they might not be looking for help, but they might know other professors in the department who are looking for help. So that's another good way to get your name out there. However, if they don't really have anyone to help you or if you just don't know any professors in the department that you're interested in, you can do what are called cold emails. And these are kind of scary, but the worst that happens is they don't answer your email. And you basically just email them and say, hey, I'm looking for research. Is there anything going on in your lab that there's like a, a position available or is there any way that I could help out as an undergrad? Stuff like that. That is kind of intimidating, but it can work. Um, but ideally, if you know some professors and can talk to them in person, either after class or in office hours, that is ideal. In my opinion, in person is always the way to go. Obviously, right now that might be a little bit tricky with COVID and quarantine and everything being online, but in the future, if you're seeing this video a couple years down the road or something, definitely go in person. Um, you can also look in to see if your university has undergraduate research programs. I know at Montana State, there's a lot of undergraduate uh, scholars program or USPs going on. And then there's also something called INBRI, which I think is Montana specific. And that's a good way to fund research as an undergrad. The thing about these programs is you as an undergrad still have to figure out a lab that will take you on. 
but with this funding from USP or Embry, you at least have some funding to help you out with the project and to give you maybe a little bit of a salary because the biggest obstacle and one of the mainest, mainest one of the main reasons that professors or um, graduate students might be hesitant to hire an undergrad is funding. Funding is almost always the limiting factor in research and a lot of times uh, professors and grad students would rather just take the time to do it themselves rather than hire someone else that takes away that precious amount of funding. So if you find a professor that will have you, definitely look into uh, things like USP or Embry or just little uh, undergraduate funding opportunities. Also, you might be able to do just like an undergraduate thesis. And so if you're able to find a lab and do that and you can get credit, that'd be great. Once you find a lab um, and you're finally getting into that research, understand that you might not be doing a lot of actual research at first. You'll probably be doing a lot of what we call like grunt work or lab rat work. Um, and that's just kind of how it is with basically any job. You're never gonna go in on top. You're gonna have to do a lot of the stuff that no one really wants to do. So like in my labs, that would be, I started out doing a lot of like waste runs because we have to autoclave all of our waste. I did a lot of uh, filling tip boxes, pipette tip boxes. Um, sometimes you're just left to do a really simple data collection or prepare some standards, stuff like that. You might not be doing anything very super cool, but that's okay because doing those simple little things will get you recognized by the people in the lab and they could ask you to help them out on a cooler project. Also know that if you are really far along in college, labs might not want to take you on because they don't necessarily want to go through the time to train you just to have you leave in about a year or even just a semester. Um, so that's pretty tricky. And on the other side of that, if you're trying to find a lab to do research in really young in college, they might not want you yet because you won't have the background classes and the background knowledge to help with that research. So understand that at the very beginning of college and at the very end of college, that's when it's going to be the hardest to find a research lab that'll take you on. So there's kind of a sweet spot at the like end of your sophomore year, beginning of your junior year that you really, really, really want to be trying to get into a lab if that's something you're interested in. Um, so that's just kind of a tip. Other things to know. Um, sometimes professors won't pay you. Sometimes you'll get class credit instead. There's like one professor I know in the CBE where I do research that is um, notorious for not paying his students and instead will give them class credit. Or um, sometimes, if you're lucky, you can see if you can get both. There was one semester when I was able to get class credit by doing an undergraduate research thesis and I was getting paid by my lab. So if that's possible, that's super awesome because then you're at least getting paid for your hourly work and you're getting class credits, which can mean that you have to take one less class for work that you're already doing. Stuff like that is really cool. Um, and like I said, your first research position is probably going to be a lot of grunt work, but that's just kind of the way it is. Let me see. I had some notes down here. Okay. Um, some other tips for finding a lab and, or talking to professors. Always, always, always look into professors' research first before you contact them if possible. Most professors have like websites on the uh, like great like overall school website. You can find individual professor websites and you can see what kind of research they're up to, recent publications, who their grad students are. That's usually something that they keep up to date. If you can't find that, just Google your professor's name that you're interested in. Probably their LinkedIn is gonna pop up. Maybe their um, research gate is gonna pop up. No matter what, you'll find articles with their name on it so that you're able to see some sort of research that they've done in the past or research that they're doing now. You always wanna go into a conversation knowing a little bit about who you're talking to. One of the worst things that you could do while talking to them or emailing them, um, unless you've truly never heard of this professor, is say, so what kind of research goes on in your lab? At the very least, you wanna say like, oh, I know you do some environmental engineering work about like water purification or something like that. You wanna have at least a little bit of, a no um, of like a nugget of knowledge that you can go in with so that you look prepared and you, they can tell that you're a serious candidate because you looked into them. So that is an absolute must. 
Um, also, what you can do for some labs is just ask to see if you can attend lab meetings. Again, this is something that was probably easier to do pre-pandemic when lab meetings were in person. Now it might be a little bit weird to just like attend a Zoom meeting, I don't know. Um, but I know there's some labs at MSU in particular that are pretty notorious for, you just kind of have to start attending lab meetings and you have to go to quite a few lab meetings until something pops up and you're like, oh, I might be able to help out with that or like so kind of sneak your way into the lab, which is <laughs> really scary and I'm so glad I've never had to do that, but that's something that you can always do. And that's a good way to get an idea of what little research projects are going on within the lab because usually each grad student is at the lab meetings and they're talking a little bit about the research. Um, another tip is to just talk to a lot of professors. The more professors you talk to, the more your name is recognizable within the department and the more likely they are to be like talking with one another and say, oh, like we're really busy in our lab. I wish we had another student to do this. And then the other professor can be like, oh, well actually I've heard this name come up a bunch in the like department. They've been looking for a lab for a little bit, something like that. Um, also, if you get an offer for research that you're not very interested in, I would encourage you to go ahead and just take the position. Um, my very first job that I got in research, I wasn't, or in college, I should say, I wasn't super duper stoked on. I mean, I liked the idea and what the lab was doing, but I was kind of iffy on if that's what I wanted to do, but I took it anyway. And once I was really established into the lab, I got a lot more freedom with talking about like what kind of projects I wanted to work on. I got more of like a managerial role, which was awesome. And the thing about research, as with any other job, the more you do it, the easier it is to get more jobs. So if you have a job that you get offered that you're not super into, you can always accept it, work in that lab for like a semester or a year, and then if you see another position that comes up that you're far more interested in, and that's more along the lines of your, um, your desired like research path, I would say then apply for that one, and there's a greater chance you'll get it with this background research knowledge. So those are kind of all of my tips. I don't, I hope it was really helpful. I don't know. It's so hard because it's really uh, institution specific and it's also really department specific. But I think a lot of these tips are pretty universal. One of the biggest thing is to just try and network as much as you can, which can be really intimidating, especially when it's not in person. I think networking in person is a lot easier since you might think it's easier to do via email, which is perfect then during a pandemic. But just know that if it takes a little bit to get into research, that's totally fine. I had friends who didn't start doing research until their senior year, and they did research their entire senior year and are still doing research after graduating. So it's never too late. I just know like my the advisor that I work for specifically has said he doesn't like to hire seniors because of that issue of getting them trained and then having them leave. Anyway. I hope this helps. Let me know in the comments if you have any other tips for how to get into research as an undergraduate. It's something that a lot of people find really important. And I know at MSU, we have um, classes that are designated with like a research tag or whatever that you have to take before you graduate. However, it's not the same as like doing actual laboratory-based research under a, a PI, which is a principal investigator, AKA your boss. Um, so anyway, that about wraps up this video. Let me know if you have any other specific questions for me. I think at some point I'm probably going to do a video about like my journey through research um, as a high school student, as an undergraduate student, and now as a graduate student, but that is something in the future. So I hope this helps and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.